Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Columbus This Week. I'm Eric. I'm here with Trevor, and uh, we we did make it in last week, but we have a ton of content for you guys this week, including some, uh, well, a cheesy festival that's coming up, and some other, you know, it's issue two uh, has been in the news lately, so we'll talk about that a little bit, and then uh, something I'm actually very excited to talk about, which is uh, not too much Columbus related, but is the ongoing referendum crisis stuff that's going on in spain and and with uh catalonia so i think that's gonna be a lot of fun to talk about yeah a lot Uh, happened in the last two weeks probably because uh (laughs) because there's two weeks worth of news yeah (laughs) so um well let's start with uh so trevor you saw the south park episode did you see the south park episode that mentioned columbus uh, I saw the clip from it. It, uh, it made its rounds on, yeah. on the Columbus media. Yeah, so it was pretty funny. Uh, Randy basically like called, I think he called the mayor or something of Columbus, and was like, why don't you change your name or whatever. And we, we talked about this a few episodes ago. but Yeah, he called him a racist <laughs> piece of shit because, uh, because the town's named after Christopher Columbus. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that was pretty funny. It was good to see Columbus get the kind of recognition it deserves. Yes, well, so. brilliant <laughs> social commentary. Yeah. You know what? I think they're just listening to our podcast and... Just, just for content, probably. So, yeah. cool. Um, so we do have uh, we have some good events coming up, or there's a couple of good events coming up. Um, you can catch me at the Columbus Mac and Cheese Festival at Easton. Gross. That's on. Uh, well, okay. Um, that's on. That's October sixth from four to eight p.m. I think that's Friday. And then on October 2nd from, well, there's multiple dates for this, but I, I just threw it in there because it kind of sounded cool, but uh, it's like booze and brews. So they go around and talk about, like, you go on a tour and they talk about some of the hidden, scary history of Columbus, and then you drink beers. So um, just about anything involved with drinking beers is going to be fun, except being tortured to death or something. So uh, I mean, should... I mean, okay, so <laughs> let's let's put it this way. Drinking beer makes almost everything better. Even being tortured to death probably wouldn't be as bad. That is true. And that, that, that comment is brought to you by your local uh, Columbus brewery who would, should give us some beer. Um, anyway, and then uh, we have another thing that's not quite uh, – it's not really an event, but I, th- I thought it was a cool article from Columbus Underground, and it's like the top 12 rooftop patios in Columbus. So speaking of brews anyway. So um, I th- we're going to throw that link in there too just for fun. Uh yeah, you because know, it sounds cool. So people like to go do that, I guess. So, all right. Um, should we get into some of the community stories? Do you want to? Do you want to start off with with one oh, from sure. our from our list here? Sure, absolutely. Um, let's see. So starting out, um, there's actually a plan by South central power to build a 650 kilowatt solar array south of columbus north, yes. of, north of lancaster is it 650 or 150 i heard 150 but i believe you if you say it's 650 well the article from side of post says there's plans for a 650 kilowatt solar array and they cool. broke ground on the 18th nice so that's good i'm glad to hear about that where, where is it going to be at again on uh, the south side no 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 no. south of columbus so think south or think um like uh, canal winchester like, like that kind of south or are we talking like like west like, west of rickenbacker basically i guess that's south ish okay well, it's south, yeah i know it's, what you're saying it's, it's like of, southeast south of columbus northeast of lancaster okay or sorry northwest of lancaster cool oh well, that's good um it's a lot, i mean that's a that's a lot of solar arrays yeah it um that's, when i was when i was skimming skimming the article before this uh to refresh my mind i think it said that it will double the state's solar out you know energy output which is good um yeah it's not coal coal is stupid so 1900 solar panels wow well i'm glad that it's actually you know economically feasible to do that um okay cool that's good stuff um so i'll go ahead and we so this is something uh the next article something we talked about before briefly was uh the coda like the plan to provide bus passes for uh forty five thousand downtown workers and residents right. uh, to ride you know to ride the bus yep. um so apparently they actually found the money for this like they, 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 the they, they, property they... owners are gonna foot the bill for this from what i've seen Oh, I thought you meant um, they just like looked in their basement and they're like, "Oh, here's the the code of mine we forgot about." Yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess there's 550 property owners, and there's the assessment is like three cents per square foot to help pay for the bus passes. 
Um, and then on top of that, they their the code is only charging forty like almost forty one dollars per person annually. And normally it's like almost seven hundred and fifty dollars per year to like just ride the bus, I guess. So um, that's good. I think um, I want to see more people taking public transportation, as you and everybody who's ever met me before knows. So I'm happy about that. So, so I, I, have I have one, one objection, objection to this, this. and okay. it's, a, it's a completely nonsense, pedantic objection. <laughs> okay. But, but I, I, I really don't, don't like them saying three cents per square foot. That's, that's such a meaningless <laughs> bullshit number that's only used to make it sound like, hey, look at how little this costs. Yeah. Well, but it doesn't cost that much. Well, but it's it's, it's such, such an arbitrary, arbitrary unit of measures. measures. Like, like, you don't park your car on a square foot of land, do you, Eric? I don't know. I definitely don't. I don't know. Do you know how much a square foot is? Well, I have a spot. I could go out and like count how many square feet it is. Is it more than one? Yes. Yes. See? So, like... Why, why don't you just do it like per space, not per per square foot? Well, because the the spaces aren't uniform in size. It's it's, it's like it, it's like nationwide, and then like you know just like Joe's like law office and stuff. It, it still feels sort of uh, sort of disingenuous, I think. Yeah. But anyways, that's I mean that's not a serious objection. Yeah. Anyway, it, I guess the program is going to cost like four and a half million dollars over two years with. Most of the money from what I read was coming from pub, uh, public or private companies, um, and some of it coming from like grants and and what what not from the state. So overall, I mean, I think it's good because as one of the one of the issues with like these kind of programs or like even like bus ridership is like you have to get a critical mass of people well, yeah, taking yeah. advantage. Otherwise, like you're just it's. I mean, you gotta like you can't force people to, but you gotta like find a way to get it like going more or less like yeah, without, you gotta get the ball rolling without the without, without economies of scale it just doesn't work it's just right. not effective and it's and it's a hard thing to do in columbus because everything is car centric yeah but i am glad um i mean this we, we talked about this too with uh like the osu's wexner medical center them getting rid of like a lot of the parking spots and like you know turning those into like either buildings or green space or something like that like i i think in the city they've kind of they've realized that it's just not sustainable to keep building parking garages and they haven't been and they're actually removing some of them too so if you look at like a lot of the construction news that's going on like um like you know if you just see like columbus underground or reddit or something like that the um there's a lot of like the low surface lots a lot of those the either the property owners themselves or some other companies like buying those lots and they're turning them into buildings and stuff so there's going to be less parking, uh, and then the city's population is going to keep growing, and more people are moving downtown. So this program, along with other initiatives, I mean, like you got to do something. So cool. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about uh, about removing parking from hospitals in particular. Well, they're not getting rid of it for like patients. It's more so like nurses well, or even, well, even doctors, for, even or for employees. I feel like that's. Uh, I mean that's that's just a place I would I would much rather um, the convenience factor be there, like it's one it's it's a hospitals are a critical piece of infrastructure for society and I think ease of access is more valuable there than it is in other places. I mean if you look at how they're built they're definitely built for ease of access every every single part of a hospital. I well think. yeah but I mean you have people coming on and working like predictable shifts so. I mean, yeah, for somebody that's, like, on call and, like, just has to show up at a moment's notice, I think that's that's different. I don't know how they're handling that, but, I mean, a lot of the nurses, like, you know, they just have shifts, so it's not like, you know, it's not like you can't plan to be there at a certain time. Yeah, so. I don't know. I know for smaller hospitals, even for nurses, um, their, their shifts might change unexpectedly, you know, if something happens, you just, you have to. Yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, again, I don't know the implementation details, but I'm sure they're, like, accounting for that, because it's a hospital, like, they're not... They might make decisions that people don't like agree with, but they're not like stupid, you know. I mean, they have egos for doctors, I guess. But okay. Um, anyway, so another. Uh, I, I guess this was this 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 article is kind of related. Um, I saw an article from. Uh, I've never heard of this website before, but basically, um, it the 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 title of the article is "America's New Tech Hubs Look to Its Small Cities." So. I thought the article was pretty cool just because it was kind of talking about Columbus and, um, you know, s smaller cities. So I guess Columbus is really good at scaling, like, startups to actually reach a critical mass versus, like, other cities. So how many examples do they have that aren't cover my meds? Uh, they don't list them in the article, but I I guess it was a bunch, so, mm. yeah. But I don't know. I, I, I Like, I kind of agree with the article, but some of it's just kind of hype, like... Oh yeah, so Columbus has 
the most new businesses that grow to 50 more 50 or more employees in the first 10 years in any other u.s metro so that's pretty cool um you know i i think some of it's kind of just hype train uh because at the end of the day it's still columbus and like until you have you know until you actually have good infrastructure and stuff it's not gonna I, 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 I want to make a meta comment on that. I think you're seeing more and more sort of hype news about Columbus, which I think is a good thing. I yes, think, I do think it's a good thing, too. I think in expanding cities, you see people trying to trying to push this point of view that, uh, that accelerates their city, right? You have these people who are trying to, um, I guess, manipulate the conversation in such a way that... Um, it's like fake news, but for, for social good. <laughs> I wouldn't say social good. It's more... It's more um, the, the capital good of the particular entity, in this case, the city of Columbus. Yeah. But I do think it's a good sign for Columbus that you have all of these people attempting to manip- to, to spin the news in Columbus's favor. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Uh, the article's worth a, it's, you know, it's a fun little read just to kind of get you hyped up. But, uh, I mean, I, I do think, you know, positive things are happening. Because I mean, we were talking, we were talking about, like, well, we're always talking about transportation because of me. But um, talking about, like, the Amazon headquarters and, like, that kind of stuff. Like, you need these this positive kind of energy and vibe to actually attract those you know those co- amazon's not coming here but to attract those like <laughs> i like how you're so sure well you know that's not i'm like 100 percent sure but uh you know just to keep you know the positive momentum going i guess so um what's next what's next you want to you want to talk about the the hyperloop oh sure so we have an update yet again on the <laughs> uh on the hyperloop story so ohio senate has passed a bill unanimously to uh, to accept the hyperloop to pass through Columbus, um, between <laughs> between Chicago, I feel like it's and, it... and Philadelphia, or sorry, Pittsburgh. Yeah. Think, now here's here's the kicker though. This is a this is a non-binding resolution which has no money tied behind it. They're basically saying, yeah, it'd be nice if you build that. Cool, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, all, you know, cynicism aside, there is good there is good news with the state having you know. I guess like official like hey like we're like pro that like you should build that because it does i think it, it, it's, it is signaling but it also says like we're willing to work with you to actually build that thing yeah i mean they're know, not so. they're not saying like go fuck yourself right they're right. saying <laughs> this would be cool but on the other hand they're saying they're not they're not like hey, they're not very well, committal committed yeah, yeah, to there, it. there's no commitment there that's, yeah. that's exactly I, I think they would be committed if somebody was actually going to build it but until somebody puts their money where their mouth is you know they, they have no incentive to put money towards this or do any work yeah so cool um another another news article that caught a lot of so this past week was pretty hot um apparently i think on monday or tuesday yeah it was tuesday so tuesday columbus city schools like dismissed early but then they still had like sports practice especially like football and so there was a bunch of like outraged people uh, on the internet which probably a novel idea to to most but basically like people were like well it's you know it's too hot to learn but it's not too hot to play football and like we're freaking out about that and let's like some of those like classrooms they don't like or even the schools like they don't have central air like they don't have air conditioning so you're sitting in like a hot like crappy room versus like if you're playing football like you're out there to like be in the heat like that's part of the experience it's like you're out there like in bad if it rains you know, like they're still going to play football. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't get the, the purpose of the complaints. I think part of it is just I think people just want to be mad. I think I think a big, <laughs> sorry, I think a big part of it is parents that are just looking for a reason to uh to complain because now they have to deal with their children unexpectedly. Yeah. But... I, I've seen parents get really mad. I remember growing up. Um, I've seen a lot of parents get really mad about uh, about like snow days and stuff. They would hate them. Yeah, I, I don't know if you were still uh, if you were still in school um, when oh you had to have been like when we had that one crazy uh, year where we got like three feet of snow yeah um, and there was just snow day after snow day yeah like people were pissed they couldn't do anything about it but they were pissed that like they had to, their their children were like had yeah to, had to be taken care of yeah <laughs> <coughs> so anyway um, speaking of children they. You mentioned, uh, we were talking before the show, that they raised the tobacco limit to 21. Um, the last thing I'm waiting for is them to raise the draft age, the age to go to the casino. and Casinos the... are already 21. Are they? Places. Yeah. Oh, well, if they're not, then I'm, I, they I think, need to be raised. So. I think they're, they are in Ohio. I think, yeah, so there's a, there's a bill that people are trying to pass to raise the, the age of, 
um, of smoking to 21, or sorry, a purchase of tobacco to 21. Yeah. Um, so my thought is it's stupid. Yeah, I mean, I, I just want everything to be the same. Like, you're an adult at some point, like, legally, and so that entitles you to anything that's adult, like, worthy. Like, you, I mean, you can, you could, um, I mean, you can go to, like, a strip club at 18. Uh, so, but, like, oh, you can't buy a pack of cigarettes? I mean, I don't smoke, and I don't think anybody else should, but, you know, same thing with drinking a beer. And I mean, all that stuff to me, it's just beyond stupid. Like, they just should have, everybody's... An adult at 18, that means you get to do 18-year-olds, like, you get to do adult things, or everybody's an adult at 21, you get to do adult things at 21, like, just pick something. Hey, Eric, I got a philosophical question for you. Okay. What is an adult? What is a child? Um, well, it depends on the way you're asking. So, are you asking, like, just in general? Yeah. Because just in general, there, it's, it, there isn't, like, a hard line. Well, I agree, but where where do we draw? Where should we draw the line? Well, for... so th- that's one of the, the the issues here is like with well, I, so I would actually say that I don't think this the state probably shouldn't even like have an involvement in this and like limiting those things, but because like you said, like you could be a mature, you could be basically the equivalent of adult an adult maturity wise at like sixteen or seventeen or something, whereas somebody could be twenty five and. You know, they sit around, smoke weed, and play Xbox all day. And I wouldn't really consider them an adult. Like, they're just, like, an overgrown child. But... I mean, on the other hand, should any 10-year-old have the ability to, like, fuck people and drink? I don't know. I mean, how... how who am I to decide that stuff? Well, I mean, it's a, it's a I, real question. Like, society well, has to... Society right. has to draw a line somewhere. Yeah, and I'm just saying draw... I'm just saying, if you're going to draw the line, just draw, like, one line. Don't draw, like, some different lines. Right. I mean, that's what they're doing. Like, you I mean, you have to be 21 or 18. 18, you can go die for your country and, like, whatever. Or buy... You can even buy a house at 18. But, like, I mean, ask yourself, like, what's more adult, like, E? Buying a house or, like, buying a pack of cigarettes? So... Or drinking a beer. I guess, I guess I disagree with that because let's let's take marijuana. Let's say marijuana is legal. Uh, what age do you think it'll be legal at? Though it'll it'll absolutely one hundred percent for sure be legal at age twenty one. Okay. There's absolutely no question about that. All right. So um, why not twenty? Why not nineteen? Well, I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm just saying if they're going to draw a line, it has to be consistent. That's well, all I'm saying. Okay. Well, here's here's my argument against your consistency. If you look at scientific studies, it looks like around age around age twenty, um, uh, marijuana stops having an effect on the develop or on uh, it, it. Basically, has a retardation effect on the the growth of mental intellect up until about twenty. So, if somebody okay. said we should make the the age twenty instead of eighteen or instead of twenty one, I would think that's a reasonable argument. Well, what about cigarettes then? Um, I mean, I think cigarettes are about the same across the board. The, the major side effects of cigarettes are irrelevant of age. Addiction and... Yeah. I mean, so addiction and, you know, the effects of, like, lung cancer, those those don't really have, like, a, a set age limit. Sure. Um, okay, well, what about buying a house? What about it? I mean, what about the, the, well, the consequences yeah, so, of doing something like that? So now you're talking about, I think, personal autonomy. Um, well, I mean, I just don't, I just don't see the difference between buying a house and you know smoking weed if it was legal like to me there it's the same it's the same thing it's just personal autonomy well so so here's so like you could just read all the studies and just say okay well i know that if i smoke weed before 20 like i'm gonna be an idiot or something i mean that's no different than people people are stupid though here's the like you can't you can't just expect you know people in society to operate like rational human beings you can't expect people to read studies you can't expect people to read fucking warning well, labels. Well, so okay, so then why not? So I mean, what you're what you're saying is you should just legislate people against their stupidity, which I fundamentally fundamentally disagree with. But we already do that. I, I'm saying we shouldn't. That's the thing. I'm just saying we shouldn't do that because that's that's not like it's it's a violation of personal autonomy. But at what point are you autonomous? I don't know. Well, we have to. I mean, we have to decide that, don't we? Because we do I, we. We can't have four year olds having sex. They can't consent to everything. Oh, I don't think they can they can do that anyway, but I mean, I don't know. I don't I, know the I, I don't mean, I don't even want to listen let's, let's not even talk about that cuz it's gross me out. So, but I, I mean, I know I like I know what you're saying, but I the the problem is we're applying a steadfast rule like at this point you are considered fully developed adult even though basically anybody knows that somebody that's 18 is not an adult. And 
we're just saying like okay so at this point like you get to do all these things that like adults get to do but it's just a i mean it's just a it's just a legal status it's it's and not so, it's not a problem with that that's ever going to have a perfect solution as long as we're going to legislate some some uh um standard I, there are going to be people that fall one way or the other where, where i'm is. just saying have the same standard for everything like if you're saying that you you can do these things at this age because you're an adult and then you should be entitled to all the things that make you an adult i mean i i just don't see like well you you have there's absolutely no defense against like doing something like buying a house at late like, at 18 or 19 years old or joining the army or something like that because i mean you, you i mean you're really going to say that like smoking weed at 20 because it's going to like hurt your brain or like make you stupid is like way more serious of a thing than like joining the military or buying a house i don't know you know like that uh, that's all i'm saying i'm just saying like i i understand that it's a complicated problem like both legally and philosophically but i'm just saying if you're going to draw a line like to me all those things like anything that you're going to say is like an adult thing and if you're going to draw a line then you just draw one line that's where i fall on that but yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I think my my only problem with that is that, that we have we have documented scientific um, sort of objections to some things. But like, but you can say the same thing about like fast food, for example. So sh- should you be eighteen to be able to buy fast food? I mean, it makes you fat and it's bad for you. So I mean, but you, I mean, at what point do you stop? I mean, at what point do you say, well, there's scientific evidence that says that this thing's harmful for you, therefore we'll ban it? Like, I mean, why even let people drink or smoke weed at all? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just saying, like, people should be, if you want to smoke weed, don't really care. Like, whatever. Don't, like, it has, doesn't, doesn't bother me. Like, I just don't care. I'm just saying, if you're going to say somebody's an adult at this age, like, then they should just be able to do whatever adults do. Or just don't say that they're an adult. Like, just don't, don't put this, like, weird quasi, like, limbo status here where it's, like, you're old enough to, like, go get shot in the face, but you're not old enough to, like, buy a pack of cigarettes. It's stupid. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and then people are going to get... And the, the worst part is people are just going to get around it anyway, so the only thing you're going to do is just have kids wind up in jail or having some record and or, you know, a police record because they got arrested for having a pack of cigarettes. Yeah, like, I, I guess I agree with that. I just... I understand why legally some or why legally people push for for different ages for different things. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that's not like there isn't justification. I'm just saying I I just don't I just don't think that it's the right way to go. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world, but yeah, I mean, personally, I'm not I'm not a fan of protectionism. Yeah. Um, but okay, um, well that that turned into a, a good a good little debate, I guess. So let's move on to um, another. So another good one. So this is a. Uh, I, I couldn't believe that you hadn't heard of this, but so like the big thing going on right now, if you watch local news or, you know, even if you're watching the NFL today or something like that, or college football yesterday or whatever is issue two. So let me, so issue two, um, isn't a Columbus centric thing. It's an Ohio centric thing. So issue two is the drug price standards initiative. And the long and short of it is if past the um, the resolution or, or law or whatever it, it'll so it'll go if it goes into effect then it pegs prices for drugs at the same rate as what they're priced for the VA which is typically uh, it's like a twenty four percent discount so we we have we linked I think it's a very good um, article from Ballotpedia which um, I didn't know about until I started trying I try because like I see all these commercials and it's like Michael Weinstein's like a big, you know, California corporate crony. And then on the other hand, I have people saying like, you know, there's like (coughs) veterans coming out saying like, hey, like we need to not pass this or, you know, whatever. But on the other hand, from what I saw like here, like the the drug companies are are like opposed to the passing of this bill and have spent like almost 17 million dollars like fighting it. A similar bill was uh, proposed in California called Proposition 61. And then it, I guess it ended up failing, but the drug companies spent like <laughs> like 110 million dollars to fight the bill. So, you know, and then the the Ballotpedia site has the full text of the bill and all this stuff, and it has like people who are supporters. So, to give you an example, like somebody who supports the bill, um, uh, Bernie Sanders is like a notable one that I see here. Like these are official official supporters. Uh, I, I saw that there are many Columbus and Cleveland and Cincinnati school, uh, not school members. Well, there are school board board members, but also city council members. Um, 
there are basically you know, a bunch of different um, organizations here. And then if you scroll down, we, we were talking about this earlier, there's all the opponents and there's a lot of like healthcare companies and uh, I don't know, like mil- like military officers association of America and like all that kind of stuff. Not to mention hospitals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So ho- yeah, hospitals, healthcare. Well, not really like healthcare. Co- well, there probably are healthcare companies on here, but um, things like the American Academy of Pediatrics, Ohio chapter, and all that kind of stuff. So, what I find interesting. So after after reading this, like, so you know, go read. Please, for the love of God, though. But also, please, for the love of God, read like information on this bill, like for our listeners, and like make your own informed decision. Before I, you know, I'm saying this before I say this, but or your own uninformed decision. Yeah. Oh, at least vote. I mean, I mean, you just told people to vote before anything else. Yeah. Anyway, so um, when I saw that Bernie Sanders was a supporter, I immediately became a supporter, just because uh, I knew that that would like make you mad. So I'm gonna vote for it just because of Bernie Sanders. But no, I I, I don't know. Like I, I'm not 100 percent sure how I feel. Like on one hand, if drug companies are spending a bunch of money to reject this bill. Typically, like, I don't really think they have my interests at heart. So, you know, I, I, I don't know for sure how I feel other than if Bernie Sanders supports it, then I guess I'll have to. But, yeah. So, I guess there's also a, a ton of, oh, sorry, a ton of opposition from outside of Ohio. Yeah. Because um, the the end result of this is, is no matter what, no matter how the, the chips fall, unless drug companies stop doing business in Ohio, which won't happen. Right. Um, no matter how the chips fall, everyone's pr- drug prices are going to go up slightly if you're not in Ohio. So yeah. so this is basically a sort of um, uh, a, a mandate that's going to cause everyone else's bill to, to go up. And so there's a lot of non-Ohio rejection. Yeah. Um, which is interesting. Yeah. And I, I, like, I'm just... I, I'm so... Um, so, well, that's cool. There's a poll here. Uh, I'm, I'm, this is one of the most confusing bills that i've ever seen where i wasn't a hundred percent sure like where i fell on it because again like so for example like uh the columbus dispatch came out and like they're i guess the newspapers like against it saying that the ohio drug price relief act would not do what its name suggests but on the other hand uh i mean if they're if they're like if they're pegging the cost to what the va pays i mean maybe that would cause the VA to raise prices. I, I, like, I, I just, like, and then, like, so, I mean, say what you want. Like, maybe you don't like Bernie Sanders or something. Like, I, I'm not here to, like, debate that. Um, I, I was just saying that to be funny. But on one hand, like, I'm pretty sure he's, like, an anti-drug, like, company guy. I mean, he's basically a democratic socialist. Um, and I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm just stating that as a fact. So, I mean, if he's I, supporting it, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like the dispatch is against it and, like, all the hospitals are against it. But Bernie Sanders is for it. Like, I, I just don't, like, it's just a little confusing here because... I don't really know like what to make of that. As I guess is what I'm saying. But so as a correction, I'd like to point out Bernie Sanders is a social democrat, not a democratic socialist. Whatever. There's, so there's a difference. I, there's a difference. I said the wrong thing. No, okay. No, no, it's, it's fine, but like he's, he's he's not he's not quite a socialist. Um, yeah. And again, I don't you know I'm not saying that to be positive or negative. Like you know, think what you want about it, but you know, just based on his reputation and the things that the rhetoric he has said. That's where I'm. I become confused because if I would, I would think like if all the hospitals are against it, then like you know I don't know. Bernie Sanders seems like a guy that would side with the hospitals for something. So, well, so I mean, I I think what's going to ultimately happen is is drug companies are going to try and stabilize their margin, right? This is going to be a hit on on their margin, yeah. and so what they're going to do is they're going to raise prices in places that aren't um, uh, Medicare and Medicaid recipients in Ohio, so everyone else yeah. in order to compensate. So this is why I think you're seeing a lot of opposition from states that aren't in Ohio. Yeah. And it's really interesting to me that this wasn't able to pass in California. Because California has... Well, they spent $110 million against the bill. Well, well, California has a lot more more clout than we do. Because, I mean... Oh, yeah. There's a a good chance that um, the drug companies are going to try and do some pretty heavy-handed bullying for Ohio. Because we're not... I mean, we don't have as... We don't have as much power and population as... California right, right. Does, or even power and money, right? Per capita, we don't make as much as Californians do. Um, yeah. It'll be interesting to see to see what the results are. But ultimately, the the, the end results are going to be everyone who isn't the the recipients of this are going to have to pay more. Yeah, because so, it's not like the it's it's not like the 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 pharmaceutical companies are just going to eat that cost. No way in hell. 
Yeah. So, like, what I'm reading here is it applies... Um, the Relief Act applies to all programs where the state is the ultimate payer for the drug, even if it did not purchase the drug directly. So I would think maybe private, if you have private health insurance, maybe that would cost more for you. Yes, but but here's the thing: it's going, to, it's it's not going to cost more for you in Ohio. That cost is going to be spread out across the entire nation. Yeah, which is the which is the really interesting aspect here, because I've I've never thought about. Um, I guess how how state politics can just in, influence the the whole nation like this, right? Yeah. So like, think about if like, how mad would you be if like Missouri implemented a similar bill like this, and now your your costs go up? I mean, and, yeah, and, I don't want my costs to go up, and so. you get nothing out of it, right? And then like, what if thirty states do this? Now your costs are dramatically higher. What if every right? state did it? Except for no, no. What I mean, yes. Yeah, so, so what this is ultimately going to encourage, I think, is if one state does it, then just because, everybody will yeah, do just it. Be, just and, because of. Oh, then then they'll have to they'll have to get the VA to raise like if everybody did the same thing they would have to make the VA raise drug prices if this passes in one state it's going to spread like, yeah cuz everybody else is going to have to or else they're it's a i mean it's a, or else they're, they're it's a zero sum game like yeah, either, I, it, yeah that's yeah that's exactly right i think that's why they fought so hard in california yeah but, but maybe we'll sneak it in in ohio <laughs> the, the first time this passes like it's 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 game over after that point. Yeah, every it's an affection. Every state's that. gonna want that because why the fuck am I paying for some asshole in Ohio's <laughs> medicine? Yeah. So yeah. So anyway, uh, this is a very good link. I I think um, I'm actually very impressed with this website. Um, but make sure you know if you're listening, make sure always go out and vote. Um, but make sure to try to be as informed as you can about that. Um, if that means listening to Trevor and I, I think that's a pretty solid strategy because we're smart and we're not stupid. So there's that, but also read the, you know, you can see all the advertisements, you can see who's paying, like what, what the support and opposition campaign contributions are, the history of the bill and like all that kind of stuff on the site. So, um, do that. Vote early, vote often. Yeah. Okay. We're going to move on to some, some tech news now. Good. No, that was a question. Oh, oh, (laughs) sorry. (laughs) Did we get through all our community news? Yeah, we did. All right. Let's go to tech news. Yeah. Oh, wait. No, we didn't. We we missed this other this one last one. Um, maybe I didn't put it down. So there was uh, so with <laughs> with the NFL. So you know, like the you know what's going on with the NFL, right? With like people not standing for like taking a yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so the Colin Kaepernick thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I I'm I don't really care if people stand or not. I think it's just up to you. So you know, stand if you want. Don't stand if you want. Don't really care. Uh, it's not a big deal to me either way. But Gresso's um, restaurant, which is down um, on South Front Street in the the brewery district, they were they did a uh, I guess they made a Facebook post um, that said that anybody in attendance who stands during the national anthem prior to the game this Sunday would receive fifty percent off their food bill. Um, I I thought that was like there was uh, all this like outrage, but like why? I mean. Yeah, it's not like they said. It's not like they said if you sit down during. We're the gonna match, charge you more. Yeah. You know? <laughs> no, this is fine. You like, know? just do it. Like, just stand up and don't be an idiot and get half off your bill. Like, what, what's the, like what's even discuss here? Like, who cares what they like? If like, just get money off your bill. It's free money. Yeah. So that yeah, that was the other thing. I just because I thought that was really funny, but everybody was you know freaking out about that. So, whatever. Okay, so now actually moving on to tech news. So. All right, so first up in tech news, we have WhatsApp was banned in China. WhatsApp. Sorry, WhatsApp was banned in China. For those of you who don't know, the the three of you who didn't, were able... Didn't Facebook buy them? Yeah, yeah I mean, for thought. like $10 billion. Yeah. So for the three of you who don't know what WhatsApp is, um, it's a instant messaging application that's not, you know, SMS text message. So yeah. it's like any other instant messaging application. Except, yeah. except Facebook owns it and it's feature rich, that kind of thing. Right. Um, it's like Facebook Messenger, but just different. So so China banned it under the pretense of not being able to fully sort of control, you know, read, censor right. uh, the application. My, my thought on this, though, is that like a lot of Chinese bans that we've seen over the years, um, it, they're doing it for, they're doing it for, uh, as, a, as a sort of... Uh, market play in their own favor right right china does this a lot they they ban google and then baidu and qq get much bigger that kind of thing um, right they ban non-chinese competitors that are big and then you know some chinese imitators. and then even if you massive 
Yeah, and on top of that, even if like you do business in China, you have to. I think you have to do it through a subsidiary, and then the, that is a Chinese owned company. That has to be at least fifty one percent, you know, owned by Chinese, by you know, Chinese owned or whatever. So it's amazing. They're they're actually one of the most nationalistic uh, countries on the planet, which is kind of ironic. Yeah, I yeah I my opinion is that is like anytime I, what any country does that like tit for tat, we should just you know ban if they're going to ban Google, ban Baidu then. I mean, that's to me. You, you, if they're going to ban Amazon, then ban Alibaba. Like, don't. So, so you're talking about like the U.S. banning, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And, well, I, I'd say uh, the U.S. in particular, but I mean, I think you know, countries and or yeah, European countries or you know, Japanese companies or anybody else should should follow as as much as they can. Well, I mean, yeah, I know the, not the, everybody can do that. But. The the issue is there's only one country that can really afford to play tit for tat with China, which is the U.S. Yeah. So. Well, I guess the EU as a whole could, but <laughs> they don't. I mean. You know, like, I guess they don't have, like, Googles and Facebooks, but, I mean, it's not like they don't have, I, you know, technology there. I don't think you know? the union countries like each other enough for that. Like, Probably I don't, not. I, I don't think if, if some Danish... <laughs> Which web- we'll talk about later, too. If some so. Danish website gets banned, you know. Yeah. But, but yeah, but so it's, it's annoying. Like, I'm, I'm a fan of, like, competition. Like, if, uh, I mean, I, I drive a Japanese car because I, I, you know, that's the car I thought was the best or whatever. Um, if I go to Japan, I expect to be able to buy, you know, as long as the company wants to, but like if Ford or somebody wants to sell cars in Japan, then there's, you know, it, it should be equal like transaction. Like, you know, Japanese cars can be made and built here, you know, can be built and sold here in the U S then, you know, Ford wants to open up a factory and they pay for it and you know, all that kind of stuff, like all the you know details aside, then they should be able to do that. And it should be owned by Ford. But, you know, if you're a Chinese company, then you know like if you want to open up something here or, or buy i don't know buy a factory or something like that then let's make it have to be 51 percent american owned i i just don't see like i mean if you're going to do that then i don't see why we shouldn't do that so see this is why very complex trade agreements like nafta exist yeah. in the first place <laughs> yeah because these are these are big issues that you know affect trillions of dollars right yeah All and right. i and i can simplify it by just saying well if they do that then we'll do it back it's right. very, or, very and if we do that then they should do it back too i'm not saying very simple financial policy that, if implemented, probably would have meant the U.S. would never become the powerhouse it is. Disagree, but let's move on. All right. So, in Equifax news, um, <laughs> you know the, the the good moral company that is Equifax. Yeah. So if you're if you're driving a car right now and you feel like crashing it because you're so mad at Equifax, then so it turns out that before they announced the leak, they actually acquired a uh, an identity protection company. Um, my level of surprise is zero. <laughs> so, so this this may be the most shady thing I've heard this year. Oh, besides the them selling stock and like all that stuff before the breach, and also knowing about it five months before this, they the, actually. This is this isn't at a, this isn't at an executive level. But this is company wide, right? So they made the call to buy ID Watchdog, which is one of the largest ID protection companies in the world. Yeah. They bought that company just before they announced their fucking leak. Yeah, I wonder who's gonna buy products from the id production company hmm i wonder if it's also going to be the same people who equifax leaked all their data oh i see where this is going it's a it's a really good way to hedge your bets because yeah. you fucked up i i think but it is it's super oh. shady this is basically insider trading at like a at like a corporation level yeah we I, have insider oh. information that's that's gonna affect this company's stock so we buy it right i really hope uh, I doubt it, but I hope that there is some goodness in the world, and the SEC and the Feds like just wreck them. Uh, I, I think they should be completely disbanded as a company too. But which uh, which has precedence? There's um so there's a thing like a corporation has to like uphold the public trust or something like that. So the government actually can disband corporations. Like they could just say you're not a corporation anymore. So I would, and, I hope that they do that. And it's really know. weird too because they're in a very privileged position that only three companies in the US are, right? They're, right. They they have access to a lot of information that, that they shouldn't yeah, as they're... far as I'm concerned. All right, but let's move on to, to the next story. So, okay. um so Showtime and and NBC and, you know, many other websites now have have been accused and found using uh JavaScript code that I like how you said that, like you didn't know what it was. It's like this JavaScript code here. Well, I just this thing I, I heard. I, about. I just I just didn't know how to phrase it for the for the layman, yeah. right? Um, so but it I, just sounded funny the way you said it. You're so, just like this this thing called JavaScript. They use it on their web browsers like, on their computers. It's like the, the, the hacker called 4chan. Yeah. 
But uh, but anyway, so they are they're running JavaScript in the background in your browser. So you basically visit the page, and they're using your computer's resources and your electricity to uh, to mine Bitcoin for them. So how do you feel about that, Eric? They're just using your uh, your laptop. They're using my electricity at this point. So on one, on one on one hand, I could not go to the website. That's true. And um, on and on on that same that same hand, if you will, if I can invent a technical technical solution um, in my web browser to block them from doing that, I am also free to do that. So if I can do that and I can still go to their website, that's too bad for them. It's just like ad block to me, as far as as far as I'm concerned with being able to block it. Now, if they want to do that. I, f- I mean, I, I don't have any more problem with a company doing that than I do serving ads, I guess, is what I'm, what I'm getting at. So if I can block it, then I'm going to block it. If I can't, then I'm, I, I either accept that I'm going to have that happen when I go to the website or I just don't go there. So. so, sorry. So my big concern about this is in light of the, uh, the story we talked about two weeks ago where um, W3C passed a standardization on DRM, you can now hide this code and it be a part of web standard, which means yeah. you can hide the code and so you don't have a real way to block it. And so you can hide the code and it'll run on Safari, it'll run on Firefox, it'll run on Chrome. Yeah. It'll so run on Edge. That, um, I, I still don't know enough about the, about it, like technically to, I guess, have a, make a judgment judgment call on it because i'm not sure because like on one hand so you, we were talking about like for example apple implementing like actual like cr- like they were implementing uh, uh a way to stop cross-site tracking of course yeah yeah and then um you know stopping like auto playing videos and stuff so on one hand and but at the same time they were one of the companies that like voted for this drm thing so on on one hand like uh, we, we were talking before the show too it's like there's kind of some like contradictory things there, so I'm I'm not too sure how I feel about. I mean, I I'm like against the DRM thing just because I generally am, but I'm I'm just not too sure about the the technical aspects of it or or, or what's going on enough to make a well enough to freak out yet. Because on one hand, I'm, I'm I'm thinking a company like Apple, for example, uh, maybe even you know Google. Uh, like I don't really see why they would want to support that in their web browsers, right? Like what does it what does it gain them? Like versus blocking that is kind of like a that's more of like a feature, you know what I mean? Well, so Flash was a very, very similar idea, I think. And Flash existed a long time before Apple decided it, sh- you know, it shouldn't exist anymore because they didn't like some of the control they didn't have over yeah. it. So maybe, maybe Apple will eventually wise up, and when it becomes a problem, they'll decide, okay, we shouldn't have signed on to this web standard. Sure. But, it, but as of now, I mean, this is, this is the direction I think it's going to head. It's going to get worse before it gets better. Probably, yeah. Um, um, yeah, what I'm saying, though, is, like, you know, the, I just don't feel, I just don't seem like there's incentive for, like, again, I'm just using Apple as an example just because the, they've turned, they're trying to a, turn privacy into a feature. Well, so this, this might have just been, you know, a use case they, they overlooked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not, uh, you know, again, not 100% sure on it. So And you have to remember, they have, on the other hand, Disney was putting pressure, Netflix is putting pressure, all these content providers that want to control people's browsers, they were yeah. putting pressure for this DRM. Like, you, I mean, if the problem doesn't exist yet, it's really hard to argue against big players who have a now problem, right? When Disney, sure. when, when Disney is, you know... You know, a multi-billion-dollar company and is leaning on you with "this is my problem now, fix it." Yeah, it's it's a lot more, um, I guess, perilous to to ignore. Right. Than, you know, something that may happen in the future. I right. think it will happen, but we'll we'll see. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's move on. Um, All right. Is it feature time? It's feature time. So feature time is my favorite time. Favorite time of my whole week. Uh, just oh, because wait. I get something brewing that I, what? Uh, sorry, we uh we missed a story. Um, Where you you removed it, but oh, oops, sorry. Yeah, no problem. Um, crap. I was trying to delete. I added like a D there. I was trying to delete it. Okay, so um, for our last tech story, it turns out that if you go to Experian you can retrieve your or someone else's um, credit freeze pin there you go. with with very little validation. Eric talked. Eric actually recommended two weeks ago. Uh, it was a sensible thing to do. <laughs> so, yeah, you had no way of knowing that not only is Equifax incompetent, Experian is also incompetent. Yeah. <laughs> and if you have some of these basic information, like 
oh, I don't know where they live. So if, if you know where somebody lives, you can, uh, and I'm not, and I'm not suggesting you do this, but if you know their, <laughs> if you know their credit cards frozen, you know where they live, Experian will allow you to unfreeze their account and get their, their freeze pin. Yeah. This is terrible. This is absolutely <sighs> awful. It's like it's, it's not that hard to find some, where someone lives. If you're a business, especially if they have Facebook or something, or if you're a business owner, that's that's a matter of public record for most people. Yeah. So, and business owners tend to tend to have more money than most people. So, let's say you've compromised somebody's identity because Equifax is stupid. Yeah. So you <laughs> you look through let's say Ohio business documents because I've yeah. done this before. So you find somebody's. And then you, then you realize Experian is also stupid. Yeah. And you're like, here we go. Like this is just it's just like free food, free lunch for them. Yeah. So even if you go through the trouble of protecting yourself, it doesn't matter because right. apparently everyone who manages you know your personal information is fucking retarded. Yep oh anyway so should we move on to the feature okay so now it's time it's really time for the feature and i am really excited because this is a i think this is a very fun philosophical topic to talk about and it's also something that's happening currently and it's very contentious and i just think it's fascinating so in I guess today, um, October first, or perhaps yesterday night, or you know, some sometime this weekend. Basically, so for those who are not familiar, there's a re- so you, you know where, like, so there's Spain, right? Um, yeah. And then there's a city called Barcelona, which is in the Catalonian region of Spain, which is kind of like its own. You know, it's kind of like it's historically, it's kind of had its own culture and its own... It's, it's know, culturally they, they have their own language. Um, it's not just Spanish. It's like Catalan or and it, Catalan it, it, or something. Ca- it's, yeah. It's, yeah. Or something like that. Catalan, um, yeah. yeah. But it's... it's At one point, it was historically, you know, independent from Spain. And sure. It's not. Right. Um, I think during the... It was like during the Spanish Civil War or something, um, it, I think, folded into Spain or maybe... Um, maybe before that or you know i mean either way it's it's been pretty contentious and so um and so this is another similar case is like uh like uh well you could say quebec or um (laughs) scotland i mean like both but like i'm not saying they're equivalent but like you know there's been some over the years there have been attempts to separate those from their current country so like separating you know quebec from Canada or Scotland, you know, separating that from the UK or something, you know, or something like that. So I, I think they're completely different cases, though. Quebec is a, well, yeah, but I mean, I, I think largely they're sim- it's similar, though. Quebec is a, is sim- no, I think Quebec is similar to Texas in that people talk a lot of shit about it, but it's never going to happen. PQ, which is Parti Quebec, has won elections, and their whole platform is like Quebec should secede. But they can, I mean, they can, they can win the province and still not have the, the political clout to do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, Scot- I, don't, I don't disagree with that. On the other hand, I think there's a real chance that Scotland could secede within 20 years. Yeah, or even sooner with uh, with Brexit if they're very unhappy with that. Um, but, but, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying, I, I say they're, they're, they're similar in the sense that it's something we've known about, but it's a region within a country, uh, and they, they for sure have a lot more... Um, I don't want to say it's more valid than, like, you know, the whole stupid Texas, like, well, we're going to be... Because, I mean, Texas, like, they're all speaking English. Like, there's McDonald's everywhere. Like, it's not like it's completely different. If you go to, like, Montreal or something like that, it's... Or Quebec City, it's French and English and all that kind of stuff. Or you go to Scotland. I mean, I think that's different, too. But um, what, what, what I think is interesting is that you have to... So, uh, okay, so what, what's going on right now is... so. The Catalonians wanted to hold a referendum on independence, right? The Spanish government is very anti that happening. And so basically what they said, they sent out threatening letters like, we're going to throw you in jail if you like, let your, if you, so like they sent letters to like the, pre, the principal of a school and say, if you hold, you know, a, 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 the election or referendum or whatever in your school then like we're gonna put you in jail for 10 years like all this kind of stuff and then the spanish uh actually sent like the federal police to quebec and they were shutting down polling stations and like not sorry not quebec uh like you know uh catalonia and they're so they're taking down ballot boxes you know there's obviously not like riots but like you know confrontation between the police and protesters and all this kind of stuff so um but the the reason i think this is fascinating is because Every, almost like every 
I don't say real country because I think it kind of sounds derogatory, but every democratic, like actual, you know, not like quasi democratic, like, you know, North Korea when they say they're democratic, whatever, but um, every like actual democratic country has signed on to this idea of self determination. And so what I think is fascinating is that these countries, so a lot, like the United States, for example, is born out of self determination, right? When other country, but when another country wants, you know, another people in another country wants to do that or something like that, there isn't a lot of like support for those people to, you know, separate. So what I think is fascinating is a, it's like an actual. I think it's a real test of democracy, and it's also, um, well, that that's probably I guess probably the the most fascinating part to me. But I, I'm a big I'm a big fan of I, I think smaller government governs better. Uh, because I think you know, if you just look at countries like Sweden or like Ireland or something, I don't know, something like that, they they their governments are far more effective. Or Denmark, their go- their governments are far more effective than ours is at like getting things done. Because you know, governing three hundred million people in a democracy versus like five million, I think it makes it easier. But uh, I, I think it's an incredibly interesting test of uh, of of democratic principles. Because if you're a, a democracy, like this is something that you you subscribe to is the idea of self determination, and then. You know, if you have these this group of people who wants to self determine, determine. I don't know how you you know break and like say, hey, we're like going to do our own thing. Is it democratic to not let them do that? I don't know. So, well, actually, I, have, I mean, I have an opinion on it, but I mean, I think there's diplomatic relationships that people worry about far more than like, um, I guess the relationship, or I, I mean, I guess even their principles. Like the people who get to make the decisions aren't exactly the philosophers and don't represent the the, the heart of the countries, right? Like I th- sure yeah. I think if you uh, if you had a poll with most European countries, most you know social democracies, and asked them, should Scotland be free to secede? Yeah, you get an overwhelming yes among the public. Right. Now, what what do you think um, Brussels' thought is on that? Because they yeah. they haven't made the offer for Scotland to be a part of the EU should they secede. Right. So clearly, there's... well, I think they also don't want to. It, it's it's like it's like right now, like nobody is saying anything about. Well, they don't. I mean, in this ca- in this case, we know why that's why that's happening. It's it's diplomacy. They don't. Well, wanna, yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't want to anger Spain mostly. Right. That's the that's the big. I mean, that's the the big concern. Yeah. And so what you're seeing is the diplomats favor diplomacy over integrity or over you know the principles that guide their society which shouldn't right. surprise people because well yeah i'm not saying that, sh- that should be surprising but i guess well you know you, you brought it up earlier or like just a second ago what was interesting is like if you pull the public they're supporting this however elected leaders or officials and stuff like aren't supporting these principles and so that's that's i guess where it well not, not necessarily i guess that difference but just the um the idea that like people are a lot more you know, just the common man is like a lot more principled in this regard, at least, than the elected leaders are. When I, I would think that it should be reversed, if anything. But I think, uh, and and I know it's super lame to quote Game of Thrones or whatever, <laughs> but uh, I think there was a point really on in the series where they, you know, pointed out that you know the common person mostly just wants to be left alone, and the no- and the lords never ever leave them alone. Yeah. So I mean, I I think you you see that in real life too. Most people just want the government mostly to fuck off and not be in their way. Yeah. And you know, make sure nothing crazy happens, but then stay out of the way. Yeah. And then the the people in power are not interested in that as an objective. They have they have much bigger goals in mind. Yeah. So. So um, I mean, I think you're just seeing a microcosm of that. Sure. But I do think Catalonia should have the have the right to self determine. Yeah. And you know, so some so one argument. people would say would be like well what about the people that live there that like want to be part of spain and the the question is or i guess the um the answer to that is it just kind of doesn't matter because that's that's just like how a democracy works so like for example if uh, i mean you, you you hear like all the republicans you know they're all up in arms about like obamacare for example um just make it as an example but if the democ- democratic process makes that the law like that's just it, it yeah like that's just the inherent nature of democracy it's like not everybody gets what they want all the time and then you get a certain large number of people that want something and then they implement it i mean that's just how it works so like if you live in i don't know you know, like if you live in catalonia and like you don't you want to like be part of spain like i think you're just kind of like that just sucks for you like you're just kind of screwed like get out and like you know be pro-spanish or something like that but otherwise like you know just too bad like if, if they want to secede, they should be able to. 
Letting the majority rule a country might be a bad idea, but letting well, a, I mean, but letting you, a minority rule the country is, is a worse idea. idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what. Uh, what was it? Was it um, uh, Churchill who said that like democratic's the wor- a democracy's the worst form of government except all others or yeah, something except like that. Everything else that's been tried. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, I mean, I, I I think democracies well they work best when people are engaged, and uh, which is again so go out and vote. Um, but they also they also work well if you structure them well but it's hard to it's really hard to get that right so i mean i think there need to be some core guiding ideological principles that everyone sort of agrees to in order for in order for democracy to work right i think if you have if you have people very factionized uh that's that's when you see democracy at its very worst right and and i mean i think you see some of that now you certainly saw a lot of it um in the direct democracies of ancient greece yeah Factionalization, I think, is is the quickest way to the death of a democracy. Yeah, I I mean, largely, I think, like when it comes to voting, like you shouldn't be looking at like political parties or something like that. Every time you go to vote, it should be you based on your beliefs, voting as one person versus like, oh, well, the Democrats voted this way, so like I'm a Democrat and I'm going to vote that way. Like that that's the 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 kind of you know factionalization that makes you kind of throw away something that maybe morally you would be you know not as inclined to do or something like that just to go along with the herd or whatever right but as we've talked about before on a national level eight percent of people do that 92 percent are ideologically committed to a to a a party right which is crazy yeah and also not good i'm willing Um, to bet at the local level it's much much lower people are much less factionalized at the local level i think well uh, maybe maybe, yes but i think in a different way um, I, I like. I think your city council, they're not like you know the Columbus City Council. Yes, like let's for example, I think they're almost all Democrats, right? So yeah, they're not necessarily going around with just at that point. It's it's you kind of remove like the factualization, so then they just get different facts based on like their interests or special interest groups or whoever's giving them money or whatever. So, but the, I think I think currently about fifty percent of blue states have uh, Republican governors. And they yeah. have Republican governors because those governors are very liberal for Republicans. Right. And I think I think the reason for that is because of decreased factionalization, right? Their politics are more attuned to their locale. Yeah. Which is why I think local government governs best because you instead of, you know, so like if California and Texas just being the two biggest, so I'm just throwing them out there um, in terms of population. So, if, I mean, if they have a disagreement on something, it's like, you know, the, it's, it's like there's no reconciliation there. Whereas like, okay, so if I live in you know ireland or something like if i have a disagreement like i can actually sit down with people from you know across the street who disagree or agree with that versus people like you know i don't know like the liberals in california or the gun-toting republicans in texas like they don't there's no you know there's there's no real communication like they just get on the internet and yell at each other so yeah and i mean i i think we've we've certainly beat the the topic of of ideological conflicts between people yeah. to death in, in various podcasts so yeah uh, and we'll keep we'll keep doing that so don't uh so stay tuned yeah uh, should, that, should, that will not stop <laughs> but uh i think i think we've talked talked about all the major points for catalonia so i want to call it a day yeah i think that's it um yeah that's that's it for me i got to talk about one of my favorite subjects so i'm a happy guy right now all right well thanks everybody for listening i hope you join us next week this has been columbus this week with trevor and eric uh, bye-bye see you